Welcome to a tutorial for the GameMaker engine. In this video, I'll show you how to connect GameMaker to Google's Cloud Database Firestore. By the end, you'll have developed your own high score demo. The functionality I'll cover here will be uploading data, such as the player's name and score to the cloud, reading that data back from the online database, and sorting the data by the score value and displaying that on screen. Although I'm keeping this tutorial short and simple, there's a lot of really powerful functionality you'll be able to work with once you've learned the basics from this video. Firestore has plenty of features, is really scalable, and you can get started for free. The first step before opening GameMaker will be to download the free official Firestore asset from the GameMaker Marketplace. Head to this address in your browser and make sure you're logged in by clicking the account icon in the top right. Once you're logged in, you can click Add to Account. You should see the page now says that the asset has been added to your account. Next, open up GameMaker and create a new game. We'll be using the GameMaker language, so select the option to code if you're asked. Now from the blank game, select Marketplace from the bar at the top of the screen and then select My Library. Now you can see your GameMaker library has opened in a new tab and click through the pages until you find the Firebase Firestore extension you just added. Click the download icon wait for it to download and then click the import icon. This will open up the import resources menu. Here just click add all in the middle and then select and remove the Firebase real-time and YoYo extensions assets folders as they only include demo files. Now just click import and you should see two folders and an extension appear in your asset browser. Also if you click the hamburger icon in the top right of the asset browser, select included files and then open in explorer you'll see two Firebase related files in your game's data files folder. The important file is the PDF document, which contains all the documentation and tells you how to set up Firestore and what all the Firestore functions are and what they do. The other file is related to setting up the extension for web games. For this tutorial, you don't need either of these files, but it's good to know where they are. The last step is to go back to the extensions folder Go into the Firebase Firestore folder, then the Extensions folder and open the YY Firebase Firestore extension. Here you should double click Firebase Firestore.ext and make sure that under Copies to, the platform that you are using, in this case Windows, is selected. You can leave all the platforms that you may want to support selected as well. With that done, open your browser again and head to firebase.google.com. Click Get Started. If you're not already logged in, sign in or create a Google account and then click create a project or add project if you already have one. Enter a project name, enable Google Analytics, select the default account for Firebase and click create project. Then you'll be able to continue to your project homepage. From here, all you need to focus on is the Firestore database menu, which can be found inside the Build drop-down menu. Select Start in Production Mode, and then whichever location is closest to you or your users, and finish creating your database. From here, select Rules at the top of the page, and modify the existing code to say Allow Read colon if true semicolon. Repeat this for create and delete. This area is where you establish the rules all data interactions will need to follow. The if true statement will always return true. So we are basically saying for now, always allow reading data, creating data and deleting data. This is fine for testing, but when you release the game, you may want to disable deleting by changing true to false, or you may want to implement a system with user authentication. Next, go back to the data menu Create a collection and name it High Scores. Imagine a collection as a folder full of data. Now click Add Document, auto generate the ID, and add two fields. The first field should be a string, so select that from the Type menu. You can call it Name and enter Test as its value or whatever you'd like. The second should be a number and can be called Score and have a value of 100. Hit Save and you'll see the document appear. Think about documents as pieces of paper inside your folder with data written on them. Just now we manually created a document, but later we will do that with GameMaker code. 
We're all done in the browser, but keep the page open so that you can easily see if the data we modify in GameMaker is updating online. Go back to your GameMaker project and right click the asset browser and select create, then object. Name this object obj underscore control as this is where we'll connect to our database, modify our data and display it on screen. Next, create a room and call it rm underscore test. I'm going to make this room 512 by 288 pixels, but how everything looks is all up to you. In this tutorial, everything's going to be very basic and plain. All you have to do here is place the object you just created by selecting the instances layer and dragging obj underscore control from the asset browser into the room. Go back to the object, right click the events panel and select add event and create. Add a description to the top of this event by writing three forward slashes at desk and create listener. Here, what we're going to do is start a listener method. This is going to listen for changes to the data and tell GameMaker when to update it. First, create the variable root and set it to the name of your collection. In this case, high scores. Then create the listener method by writing listener equals firebase firestore root dot listener. With the firebase function, we're accessing the collection and then we're chaining the listener method to it with the dot. Next, set the variable data to minus one. Later, this variable will contain an array with all of our data. Finally, create a function called sort underscore score. This function will take two structs, A and B as arguments. All this function needs to do is return b.score minus a.score. Basically, a and b represent two high score documents, and our function will go through our array of scores, comparing them all and sorting them in descending order. If you'd like to reverse the order, you could swap a and b. Next, we're going to make a new event in which we're going to create and delete high score documents. For testing purposes, first we need to check if the n key has been released. Writing ORD around the string n tells GameMaker to check for n on the keyboard. Inside this if statement, we'll create a local variable called doc and set it with the function json underscore stringify. This function takes a struct, which you can create with two curly braces. A struct is just a variable which holds other variables. In this case, you can think of structs as the GameMaker equivalent to documents. The json underscore stringify function will convert our struct into a json string, which is basically a file format for transmitting data. So inside the struct, copy the format of the document we created in Firestore earlier by setting name and score. Make sure you use colons instead of equals inside structs and put a comma in between lines. We're going to set these variables with the function get underscore string and get underscore integer. These functions will prompt the user for input with a pop-up box. However, they're deprecated functions, which means they technically work, but their use is discouraged. However, just for testing purposes, they get the job done. In these functions, the first argument should be what the pop-up says, and the second should be the default value in the input box. Now you can just refer to the database again with Firebase Firestore root and chain the set function, passing in doc as the argument. Next, just copy and paste the if statement, but change n to d. This is where we'll want to test the functionality to delete data. We also need to check that data is not equal to minus one, because that would mean we've not connected to the database yet. Also, we need to check that the array from which we are deleting data has more than zero entries, so that there is actually something to delete. Inside this if statement, create another local variable called doc, and to the database, we'll chain the child function passing in data zero.id as the argument. The child function tells the database to look for something that is inside where we're currently looking. If all our data is stored inside this data array and it's sorted in order of descending score, the first value stored at index zero will be the top high score entry. Because the document will be a struct, we can access its ID variable to tell the database the ID of the document we're deleting. Now all we have to do is take the doc variable and run the delete function on it and the top document will be deleted from our database. Handle with care. We're going to move on to the opposite functionality now, which will be receiving the data from Firestore. This is going to happen in an async social event. Asynchronous events handle callback from an external source such as an online database. 
The first thing to do will be to create an if statement which checks if async load question mark status is equal to 200. Here, async load represents all the data GameMaker is receiving from outside the game and the status tells us how the data transmission is going. In this case, 200 means it was a success. Next, make a switch statement which handles async load type as its expression. A switch statement is a way to execute different sections of code depending on the value of the expression. In this case, we want to do different things depending on the type of the data. To check the type, write case Firebase Firestore Collection Listener and add a colon. Then add a blank line and type break with a semicolon. This is saying, in the case that async load type is equal to collection listener, run the code until break is called. So this section of code is going to deal with the listener we created earlier and will be triggered whenever the database is updated. All we have to do here is write Firebase Firestore root dot query. This is going to tell GameMaker to ask Firebase for the data so that it has the updated version. Now create another section for the case that type is equal to collection query. Here we'll finally change the data variable from negative one to an empty array. This is going to tell GameMaker that we're connected to the database and that there will be data. We're going to access async load again, but this time we're going to get the value of data. So reversing our process from the step event, we need to pass the JSON data we're receiving so that we can get it as a big struct. Pass just means to turn the JSON data into something GameMaker readable. Next, use the function variable struct get names, passing data as the argument, and assign that to a local variable called names. This is now an array containing all the document IDs. With this array, we can now make a for loop to iterate through each document and using variable struct get, pull out each document as its own struct. Then we'll just set the ID of the document to the current document name and add it to the data array with array underscore push. Finally, use our sort score function from before in array underscore sort to sort the data and make sure to write break at the end again. If you don't understand the technicalities of how all the networking works, that's okay. And there's examples of all the asynchronous events in the documentation. Anyway, all that's left to do is display the data to the user. Create a draw event and first check if data is equal to negative one, because we know that if it is, then it means we haven't received any data yet. So while this is true, we can simply draw the string loading dot dot dot. If this is not the case, we should draw all the data. Add an else statement and draw the string high scores colon. Then under this, Use a for loop to iterate through the data array and reference each document in the local variable doc. Then we're going to draw some text 16 pixels across and 48 pixels down. But as we're iterating through i, we can multiply 32 by i to move each high score entry down a line. Finally, for the text, we're going to create a template string by prefixing our text with a dollar sign and then where we want the user's name and score to appear, write doc.name and doc.score inside curly braces. We've come to the end of our coding, so all that's left is to run the game and test everything out. If you'd like, drag your game to one side of your monitor and drag the Firestore website to the other half so that we can see both being updated. If you run the game by clicking the run button or by pressing F5, you'll see loading is displayed for a split second before our single high score entry we created in Firebase appears on screen. Now you can hit N and you'll be prompted to enter a score. So enter something below the current high score and then enter any name you like. Now you'll see this almost immediately appear both in the game and in the database in your browser. Create another entry but with a score higher than the high score and you'll see that the high score list is indeed sorted in order of descending score. Next, you can test out the delete functionality by pressing D. As soon as you press that, you should see the top score being deleted and you can continue pressing that to delete all the scores. Anyway, that's been it for this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. If you've been following along and implementing this for yourselves, I hope you're happy with the result and understand how everything works. If not, please drop a comment and I'll endeavor to fix a bug or explain myself better. If you make anything cool, please make sure to share it in the comments. At the end of the day, while I think this is a great way to get started with connecting GameMaker to the cloud, this isn't the end of the road. There are loads of alternatives to Firestore with their own advantages and disadvantages. Still, GameMaker's official support for Firestore makes this easy to recommend. 
Although obviously, when you implement this in your game, you won't want to expose all of this functionality to the user. Remember that even though this tutorial only covered making a really basic high score demo, any use case for an online database you can think of can be achieved with a bit of work. So get creative and make sure you use the documentation and some online help to make the most out of the cloud in your games. If you want to see more kinds of these videos, please subscribe to the Game Maker channel and make sure to leave a comment about the video or with any ideas for future topics you'd like to see covered. That's all from me, I'll see you in the next video.